The bad news is, I am surrounded. And now it's just a waiting game. About 20 minutes ago, I was in a hot shower in the house, and I mean hot. And for some reason now, I'm out in the cold, about to go on another stealth camp. It's not gonna be quite as cold this week as it was last week, but it's gonna get down to about six degrees or something like that. And I was about to go and buy another item for 180 pounds to help with the warmth in here. But I thought because it's not gonna be quite as cold tonight, I'm gonna to test it out, see what it's like in this temperature. And then next time, if it's still too cold tonight, I will buy that item and show you what it is. But for now, I've got two places that I need to stop at. We've got a tool station to buy some tin snips so that I can fix that little heater that I bought last time. And then we're going on to buy some food. And then as you can see by the title, we're going on to the police station where I'm gonna to try to stealth camp right outside the main entrance. So I'm just pulling into tool station now. It is gonna shut in 25 minutes. I hope they've got the thing that I need. Um, what well, I think you do, whether you got them in stock or not, uh, tin snips. You're doing a curve left or right. No, I'm I'm just chopping a yeah. straight. Yeah, so you want to straight. Yeah, perfect. Alright, right, perfect. Cheers mate. Yeah. See you later. And Tesco's is the supermarket of choice for today's dining ingredients. taken everything that I might need from the front and I've put it in the back already because I can't afford to be getting out tonight and getting into the front if I've forgotten anything. Tonight is a super stealthy one. Now I've chosen a specific police station. I've looked at a lot of them on Google Maps and scouted them all out. Some of them you can't even get close to. So I've made sure that I found one that I can park at and it all looks good on paper, but in reality, we're not gonna know what it's like until we get there. That's the police station right there. Oh no, these are the spots that I wanted to park at. That is the police station in front of us. Well, so at the moment I've just pulled over on the other side of the road, but I'm a double yellow line, so I can't stop here. But that is the police station there, and that is obviously the main entrance, and then there's these three car parking spots in front of it, and that's where I was hoping to stay. Now, obviously I can't, because there's cars in the way. The only other thing I'm thinking at the moment is there. There is a space there. Well, I've got the lights off in the cab at the moment, so you probably can't see me, but I just don't want them to obviously be able to see me. Oh no, this spot is for police only. This is where the police park. It says marked police vehicles only on the side. All right, so far it's not going to plan, but I've just parked up around the back at the moment, and there's another car park right next to me, and it's got the barriers to let people in and out. Obviously, they're not gonna let me in. There's one marked car there. I think most of them park in an underground car park. There's one right in front of me there, so I need to get out of this spot. But I've had another look on Google Maps, and what I've found is around the front near where we just were, there's actually another car park, which is, I'm guessing, for the staff to go in if they're working in the office, not the marked cars, but just the normal police staff that go in and out. And there's no barrier on that car park. Now, it's probably a stupid decision <laughs> but I'm thinking of actually parking inside the police station because at the moment that car park seemed pretty empty when I went past and quite dark so I'm guessing you know the police station is not going to be that busy at this time of night so maybe there's going to be barely any staff in there until the morning but it's either that or give up before I even begin and I'm not one to give up so I think we're literally going to drive around to the front and just go straight into their car park Right, I'm switching my light off again, so I'm sorry you're not going to be able to see me, but this is the bit where I just need to make sure that nobody spots me. So we're coming around back to the front entrance now. 
So on the left here, this is where there's a spot for a marked car to park. The main entrance is literally just right in front of us right now. And we are just swinging in. Oh, what was that? There's a sign there that says, please do not park here. There's a huge no parking sign on the bottom. All I can do is just stick myself in one of these for a minute, turn the lights out and just sit tight. That there is the massive do not park here sign. Over the back there, that's the main entrance. Okay, I'm in the back. All the doors are locked. And after a quick look out the curtains, it doesn't look like anybody spotted us. But obviously it's hard to tell. There are a lot of windows for the building just in front of the van here. What I'm hoping is that no one's seen us get in and if they spot the van during the night, they're just going to assume it's to do with someone else or it's a work van or something like that. The only real risk is when I have to open the side doors or one of them at least when I'm going to be doing some cooking. But first things first, it is going to get pretty cold in here very soon. So just like last time, I'm going to get changed into a big thick hoodie. Now that I'm in the back, I can actually realise how slanted it is. Obviously you guys can't see. I'll give you a demonstration with a bottle of water, but basically the back of the van it's right up in the air compared with the front. Luckily, my head's going to be up that and when I'm sleeping, otherwise I'd wake up looking like a tomato. But it's all good. We've got to get on with some cooking soon because I am starving. Right, so tonight I'm making fajitas and I prefer to use beef rather than chicken. So I'm using a sirloin steak. So I'm going to make things a little bit easier for myself. Usually, obviously, what you do is you put the meat in the pan and then you put the seasoning into the pan. But when you put powdered seasoning into a pan, as you may know, it always ends up burning onto the pan, which isn't an issue at home because it's easier to wash up. But when I'm in the van, it's more difficult to wash up. So I'm going to season the meat in a little Ziploc bag first. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using scissors to cut my meat up instead of a knife, I do have a knife. But again, it just makes things easier with washing up because if I use a knife, then I'm going to have to cut the meat on that chopping board and then I'm going to have to wash that chopping board up. And with raw meat, you really do need to wash things properly or I'm going to get all sorts of bacteria living in this van. So I just thought it'd be easier to use the tray that the beef comes with and just chop it into bits with the scissors. Right, so now we just chuck the beef into this bag. All I now got to do is wash the scissors and this hand and then that's it. No more raw meat is going to touch any surfaces. I've got the roasted tomato and red pepper fajita seasoning mix. I usually prefer a Jamaican jerk mix, but they didn't have any. So I'm gonna have to make my own for next time I do this. So now this would be the worst time for the police to come knocking on the door when I'm sat here with this thing. So it's supposed to be an all-in-one knife. It's like serrated, it's for vegetables, meat, bread, everything. I was gonna get all separate knives, but obviously a lack of space in here meant that was a bad idea. Because we're in the van, especially because we've got to be super stealthy tonight, I'm using a ridge monkey again so that I can shut the lid and that way no smoke or steam will come out when it's actually cooking. But we are going to have to open up this door. So before I actually get going with the cooking, I'm going to have to have one last little check out of the window. And if no one's around, we'll open up, get the gas on and get going as quick as we can. Usually with chicken, you put the chicken in first, so it has to cook longer, but beef doesn't need as long to cook, so it's going in at the same time the pepper and onion is going in. Right, they're only small wraps, so I reckon we'll need three. What I like to do, just before it comes out of the pan, is add a bit of salsa. Most people have this room temperature, but I like it warmed up. So I'll just chuck a bit in, give it a little warm through, and then it's ready. It 
It looks good. It smells good. Does it taste good? I mean, that's really the vital question, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Still haven't been caught. Better not speak too soon. Do you know what? The temperature's actually been holding up right in here tonight. 15.5. What is that noise out there? I think we're good. But I don't like it when things are a mess in here. It's our first job. Let's just get everything tidied up. Someone's just pulled up right next to me. Well, I've just turned on just the lights at the back of the van. I haven't wanted to stick my head out the curtain just yet to have a look in case they're looking at the van trying to figure out what I'm doing here. I can't really get to the curtain yet either. I was just in the middle of clearing up this pan and it'll make too much noise if I try and put everything away. I think they're still out there. I really need to move that pan out of the way. the light from the phone to see enough to put this pan down but the thing's so noisy all right so the car is literally right next to us there's no one in it so they've obviously got out and gone into the building there's a few more lights on in the building than there was earlier as well it's been about 20 minutes, the car's still there, but no one's come over to me. So for now, I'm declaring myself safe. So I've cleared up, I've washed up, everything's put away. So before I get the bed out, I'm going to open up these new tin snips that I've just bought. And for those who didn't watch my last video, you might not know why I need them. Basically, I bought this uh, stovetop heater. These notches here, they're supposed to sit on top of the grill and then it twists in place. But the grill that I've got is too thick to slide up into those notches, so I've just got to chop off a tiny bit. You can see where it needs cutting. Right, the moment of truth. Obviously, it's not going to click into place properly, but as long as it fits down like that, which it does, we're in business. So the original plan was to put that heater on for about 10 minutes before I go to bed. But not only is it... 15.4 degrees in here at the moment so I don't actually need it but also that car's still here so somebody might come back to it at any moment which means I can't really open the door a little bit just to get that ventilation in here when I turn the gas on but for now I'm going to clean my teeth get the bed out get the projector screen out see what's on YouTube <laughs> I still haven't had a knock at the door yet. I kind of expected one because of just where I'm parked. It's like, surely it's got to happen. But we'll deal with that when we get to it, if it does happen. For now, I've got my snacks. And since I'm at the police station, I think it'd be quite fitting to watch some sort of crime videos, maybe like police chases. So I'm going to watch this for a little bit. And then before I go to sleep, I'm going to stick the camera back out of the curtain just to see if that car's still there or see if anyone else is. I've had enough of watching YouTube videos. I'm so tired, I need to give me some sleep. It is, oh, I didn't know that was the time. I don't know if you can see that. It's half past two in the morning. Well, it's actually 14 degrees at the moment and my phone says it's nine degrees outside. So it's a lot warmer than last week. But the problem is I don't want to wake up halfway through the night freezing cold. So I'm going to make a hot water bottle. And that way it's going to be even warmer in here and I can take my clothes off and get a comfortable night's sleep. I forgot this kettle leaks, so I'm having to do it over here. So I've just had my last little look out the curtain and that car is still there next to me. But as you know, nobody's come to the van yet. So hopefully that means they won't in the night either. And as for me, it is 18.3 degrees in here now that I've just made that hot water bottle. So I'm pretty warm. I've been able to take off my hoodie, my trousers and my socks. So I'm pretty happy that I can get a comfortable night's sleep. It's gone 3am now. So 
I'm going to catch you guys in the morning. I've just been woken up by the sound of a car pulling in. It sounds like right next to me, like literally in the spot next to me. And when they got out of the car, my van like rocked back and forward. It didn't sound like they hit my car with their door. But I think whoever got out must have like leant against my van as they got out. Because the whole van sort of swam back and forward for a second as their door slammed. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to stick my head out of the curtain. And see if I can see anything. The good news is, my windows haven't steamed up. So hopefully, no one would have known that anybody was in here. The bad news is, I am surrounded. There are cars everywhere. I only just woke up because of that one right next to me. But they must have been pulling in for the last few hours. I must have just slept through it all. Like temperature wise, it's 13.9. My phone says it got down to 6 outside, so that's been fine. But the problem is, it's only just gone 7 o'clock. And sunrise isn't officially until 7.41. And I don't class this as an overnight stealth camp until it gets to 7.41. I think my only option is to put the kettle on. And now it's just a waiting game. I was gonna have some porridge this morning, but I'm not even that hungry yet. I wasn't planning on getting up this early. another car just pulled up well close I can hear people talking this time but it's official we've had sunrise as soon as I finish this drink I'm jumping in the front and I'm out of here station just there. Well I'm running on four hours sleep but I actually feel surprisingly fine. It was comfortable even though I was on a slant it was really nice and warm even though it was what did I say six degrees it got to outside I think and I didn't have any heating other than that hot water bottle last night. So yeah I consider that to be a successful stealth camp so I've now done Gatwick Airport and the police station but thank you for watching this one if you did like it hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up and whatever we end up doing on the next video I hope to see you there